If you intend to do any kind of editing in Neos VR, you'll most certainly need what is called a developer's tooltip. This is a multifunctional tool, so let me summarize what this thing is for. One, it can move, rotate, and scale things with precision. Two, it can open what are called inspector panels to look at and modify the properties of everything in your current world. And three, it can be used to create new objects including mirrors, the avatar creator, and basic primitives. The set of videos that you see in this environment will tell you all about using this tool to your advantage. I've done my very best to keep the content short and to the point, so go ahead and watch them in the order that they are presented, and they should help get you up and running with no guesswork necessary. Let's first cover the most basic stuff regarding the developer's tooltip. After obtaining it from your inventory, you can equip it just like any other tool by double tapping the grab button. Selecting objects is done by pointing your tool's laser at something and pressing the secondary action button. The handles that appear can be used to move, rotate, or scale the object, like so. It is important to understand that some things in Neos require a specific tool to respond to your actions. If I attempt to use these handles with my other hand, it won't work because I don't have a tool equipped on that hand. Unselecting the box can be done the same way it was selected. Also know that you can deselect everything through the tool's controller menu if that's easier. If you select one object, then select another, you'll notice that your previous selection remains highlighted. These look similar, but only objects that display the name along with these selector buttons are actually selected by the tool. The reason it works this way is to allow for snapping. Just select the point that you want, and that point will snap to whatever other points are present on the other object. Finally, I'd like to clear up what could potentially cause some confusion in the developer tools controller menu. You'll notice that there are two delete options. Delete will remove whatever objects you are grabbing from the world, while Delete Selected refers to the selection you've made with the developer's tooltip. This is typically used on things that may be selectable, but not grabbable. Inspector panels are extremely important to understand, so let's take a quick look at some of the things they do. To open an inspector panel, open the developer tooltip's control menu and select this option. If nothing is selected, it'll ask you if you want to open the root of the scene. Confirm this by pressing the trigger button a second time. And just for your reference, when you hear the word root, it's basically just another word for container. The root contains all the stuff in your world. Okay, so what we have here is a panel. The left side outlines all of the items present in the world, including yourself, while the right side outlines the parameters of items that you've selected from the left side list. Allow me to demonstrate just one of many reasons why the inspector can be useful. I've purposely disabled the ability to select or grab the staff. If we look in this list, we can see that the staff is indeed present here. To select anything in an inspector panel, just double press the trigger button. I want you to notice that selecting things in the inspector panel is exactly the same as selecting things with the developer's tooltip. When a selection is made through this list, we're presented with all of the properties of this particular item. Every object that exists in Neos is treated the same way and is nothing more than coordinates plus a list of components. Each component attached to an object serves a specific function. If we look at grabbable here, for instance, we can see that I've disabled it, so let's check it on. This staff still cannot be selected or grabbed, however, because many interactive components, such as grabbable, also depend on that object having what is called a collider. Colliders define where an object can be interacted with. You don't typically have to set these up manually, just know that they are required for most interactive functions, so I'll check this back on and now we can grab this staff. 
We're done with this object now, so I'll delete it through the inspector panel by hitting this red button here. Let's set this panel aside because there's one more thing that I want to demonstrate. Typically, when opening inspector panels, you first select the desired object. So I'll select this big box, then open the panel through the controller menu. It can be confusing at first because this list looks a little different from the list we first opened. This is because this is only displaying a list of this object and whatever objects are attached to it. We can see that the small boxes on top are indeed attached to this big box, which is why they all move together. I want you to understand that from the root, or container, of the world, we can actually navigate our way to one of the small boxes and isolate it in the inspector panel like so. Pressing this up arrow will move you up this object's hierarchy and will eventually bring you back to the root of the scene. There may be times where it is difficult to select your desired item through the inspector because they are very deep in an object hierarchy. For this reason, at any time you can select an object from this list, then hit this down arrow which isolates your inspector to only include that item and any items attached to it. When you attach objects to other objects, it is often referred to as a parent-child relationship. When I move this big box, the smaller boxes on top all move with it, because they were made children of that object. If you want to replicate this behavior on things that are not currently set up this way, just open an inspector panel for both objects, press and hold the grab button while your laser is pointing at something in this list, move it to the desired object on the other panel, and release the grab button. Now if this larger box is moved, rotated, or scaled, the small box will move, rotate, or scale with it. Remember that inspector panels all reference stuff within your world, meaning that you could perform the same action if you just open the root of the scene instead. Sometimes it can be easier to do it that way. The developer's tooltip can be used to create certain new objects. If we look in the controller menu, we can see an option called Create. And from this panel, we can choose what's available from here. This includes things like mirrors, user interface templates, basic 3D shapes, and other handy things. While this may seem self-explanatory, I would like to go over a few things that you may want to know about. When creating 3D objects with this tool, you'll notice that when they appear, these green highlights are present. Pressing and holding the trigger button while your laser is over these green dots or lines will let you reshape the object to some degree. Just remember that this specific action requires you to be using the developer's tooltip to do so. When you're done, you can press the secondary action button twice to deselect it. You might later want to get those green lines and points back though, so to do that, we need to select the object again. Any object that has miscellaneous functions will have one or more empty boxes displayed here. This is the way that we can enable editing for 3D objects created with the developer's tooltip. It's worth noting that the same applies to text components that you may wish to edit at a later time as well. I consider components to be the core element of NEOS. Everything that does something has components attached to them in some way, shape, or form. If I open the properties for this box, we can see that it already has some components applied. These components include the actual geometry of the box, its surface properties, whether it's grabbable or not, and so on. We can add components to objects by pressing Attach Components. Now, I understand that this can be intimidating. There's a lot of stuff to look at here. Just know that the large majority of the functions that you'll likely want to use will be in the Transform category. To give you an example, I'll add a Spinner component. Notice how this component now appears in the Inspector. I can change the numbers around to determine how fast this thing spins and in what direction. 
One other thing that I should mention is that you can copy and paste values by holding the grab button and letting go over a different field. We hope that you found these tutorials helpful, but know that there is much more to explore. In addition to the wealth of resources that you can find in the NEOS Hub, I highly recommend visiting the Handy Components world, as this will provide for you an easy way to observe and learn about components that you'll definitely want to know about. Aside from that, the next step in your journey lies with Logix, which, as its name implies, allows you to apply logic and thinking to your creations.